the band five or the starting salary of a newly registered nurse compared to the starting salary of a lecturer is not do you know people that have been successful applying for lecture jobs from outside the uk like yes. it's not even really yeah but then yes. i've changed my mind <laughs> please don't <laughs> i not changing my mind because I <laughs> So this video is probably sponsored by Lemonade Finance. Uh, Lemonade Finance is a money transfer app that allows you to send money from the UK, Canada, and the US. Yes, so all my friends in the US now, you can actually download Lemonade Finance using the link in the description to send money to 10 different African countries at no fee at all. You can send money to Ghana, you can send money to Nigeria, to Tanzania, to Uganda, to Rwanda, to Kenya, to Benin, Ivory Coast, at no transfer charge. As a matter of fact, if you send money using the referral code NANEL, you get 10% of the money you're transferring back Back into your account. So if you send hundred pound, you get ten pound back. If you send two hundred pound, you get twenty pound back. But it's capped at fifty pound. Okay. So download Lemonade Finance with the link in the description. Send money now using Lemonade Finance. And let me know what you think. No transfer charge, and the money goes instantly. It's super convenient and very very reliable. Okay. So thank you Lemonade Finance for sponsoring today's video. Hello guys. So today I am super 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 excited with this interview because this person here, Irene Bosman, she's been my role model for ages, for ages. Even when she did not know me, I used to use her name in my prayers. I used to use it like God. Just that you have done for Irene, please do same for me. Like she's somebody that I so much admire, and most of you may not know her, but I'm sure you may have met her husband so her husband is dr shadrach what's the surname Dari. dr shadrach Dari. and if you are a frequent viewer of my channel i'm sure you've watched the video i did about five savings and investment tips for migrants in the uk and that was the the gentleman i interviewed and a doctor and a, a uk lecturer as well so that's Mr. Shadrach's beautiful wife, Irene Bosman. I'm so happy to have you here, Irene. So Irene is um, a nurse trained in Ghana, and then she moved to the UK to do her master's. She did the whole registration process. She came to the UK to work as a band five nurse. She quickly got promoted to band six. Then she got promoted to band seven. And then now she's working as a lecturer in the UK. Such a beautiful journey. And for those of you who are wondering why I used to use her name to pray, quick story. So when I... When I finished uni, there were no jobs in Ghana, like I keep saying in my videos. And then I really wanted to do my master's. And I always had the passion. At that time, it was very, very strong to become a lecturer one day. I wanted to quickly do my master's, okay? And then some of the schools that I was applying for was Glasgow Caledonian. It's a university here in the UK. And I went on their international applicants page on their school's website. And then I saw this lady there. And... I, I got to know that she actually is Ghanaian and she actually went to the same nursing school like I did. She was my senior. I never knew her in school. And I got to know that she even won international, please correct me if I'm wrong. You won the International Student Award your time in your school or something. Oh yeah, it was a grant. The, we had a grant for the vice chancellor where you can apply to get some money to do research. So I got the award. So that was the one that was being advertised. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, this girl. So she was taught by the same teachers I was taught by. She went to the same school. She's from the same city. She's from my country. She's a lady like me. But everything that I've wanted in life, God has given them to her. Although I didn't get the scholarship. She got scholarship to do her master's. I never got the scholarship. But during the time that I was applying for those scholarships, I was praying to God that God, as you have done for this lady, do stay for me. <laughs> forward, I never got the scholarship. I decided to pursue the UK nursing process and then somebody gave me her number. I was so privileged. So I used to call her. She helped me with the OSCE and we used to have a chat. Guys, I've never met Irene like in person. I know we went to the same school, but she's been a big sister to me the entire time I've been in the UK. And anytime I need a quick, you know, clarification on something, I will call her and she's been lovely. She and the husband, and I'm so privileged to have you here. <laughs> Today, we are not going to talk about the scholarship, and we are just going to talk about her journey to become a lecturer. Because I know that most nurses want to quit bedside and go to the classroom. Some people want to do that. So today, Irene is going to tell us about how she was able to, you know, move from being a nurse to become a lecturer in the UK. I will ask her if it's worth it at all 
comparing the pay and the stress. Because like, maybe after listening to her, you might decide that mm, you forget that dream and maybe start doing YouTube or something. <laughs> so, Irene, I'm so happy that you are here. This has been a very long intro, four minutes intro, Nanel. Okay. <laughs> so, please tell us your name and then anything I left out in the intro. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, thanks, Nanel. I know this interview has been long overdue for almost three years now. You are yeah. trying to <laughs> <laughs> but I think in God's own time, we are here. So as Nanel mentioned, I also refer to her as my celebrity because Nanel is very popular everywhere. <laughs> and she's making the cash, so we are learning from her. <laughs> so like she said, my name is Irene. I registered from um, Ghana, um, attended Kenya University and currently working here as a lecturer in nursing. Um, so she's already shared part of my journey. So after my master's, I just worked with the NHS, started at Band 5, went through the process to get the NMCP. Then, because my master's was in diabetes, um, I did a, a Band 6 role in the inpatient diabetes nursing. Then, not long after, I got a Band 7 post to work as a diabetes specialist nurse as well. Then, now I am in academia teaching nursing students. So, I'm still in the nursing field and um, have so do you teach undergrad nurses? Yes, I teach undergraduate nursing from year one to year three. And here oh. they've got the honor students at year four. So sometimes we do dissertation supervision for some of these students as well. Wow. You were advanced seven. You were close to like the highest rank. <laughs> Why did you leave? Because band seven pay is good. Why did you want to go into academia? Okay, I think... Um, it's a lot of um, factors coming into play um, with family movement and all that. Um, so I enjoyed my role as a diabetes specialist, and there's no doubt about it. So um, at some point I had to move um, in terms of location as well. And becoming a lecturer is also part of my, let's say, long-term goals or short-term goals. So, I've always wanted to maybe do a higher degree, like a PhD, and act as both like working in the clinical setting as well as research-based or an, a higher education university. So um, in terms of that, I felt like, okay, why don't I just give it a try and apply for the nursing lecture now if it's something that I also admire so that I can see how working in academia versus clinical looks like. And at what point I'll be able to merge the two, maybe whilst working as a clinical nurse specialist and doing some teaching roles as well. So that's the reason why I moved into academia. And yeah. so far, is it has it been worth it? Like if you compare your salary as a band seven nurse and then your salary as a lecturer now, and then the stress involved, like the responsibilities, what would you say? Like, Well, in terms of um, salary-wise, I think the teaching or lecturing has got a different pay structure from the lecture or lower band system. Um, the band five or the starting salary of a newly registered nurse compared to the starting salary of a lecturer is not the same. Which is uh, higher? That's all I'm I think the starting salary is higher for a lecturer. So um, generally, maybe it can range from 33000 to forty nine, depending on where you are working. That is the annual rate. So it will be very hard to compare a senior nurse, which is a band seven, to a starting lecturer role. Because in the lecturer roles, so we've got grade seven, grade eight. Okay. And so what start, grade are you? I started at grade seven. Okay. And the highest is what? I think once it moves to grade eight, it can move to grade nine. But then different universities call it different names. You can be a lecturer, senior lecturer, associate professor, professor, reader. So it depends on where you are working, really. Even within the UK, some people may call senior lecturers an associate professor or vice versa, depending on the location, England, Wales, and all that. Okay. Yeah. So now... For people watching me that are interested in becoming like you, becoming a lecturer, what do I do? I'm a nurse. Maybe I'm a bad five nurse, but I want to go into academia. What do I do? Okay. I think it's, it's simple. Just like applying for any job, most of the job description of becoming a lecturer in the higher 
education sector, which usually refers to university, is similar. So first of all, you've got an advantage being registered with an NMC, uh, which is the professional body that you are with. So that is one essential criteria. And you should have a degree. And sometimes they require that you have a master's as an essential um, qualification or nearing completion of a master's. Maybe you've started, you are yet to submit your thesis or dissertation, or at least you are doing something. If you have a PhD, that is brilliant because it's usually on the top list as desirable. But if you have a master's and not yet a PhD, you can still get that job. So first, the degree in the nursing profession, being registered with a professional body like NMC in the UK, um, and also having a master's or nearing completion of the master's. And an advantage is also having a teaching and learning certificate. It will be really helpful because you're going to teach students, so they want to know whether you've got any experience with teaching and mentoring students. And if you've got some publications or articles published somewhere, not even in any very big journal, just a small publication of your dissertation or something, it puts you at the top edge as well. Yeah. Wow. If I only have a diploma, I'm not likely to qualify to lecture now. <laughs> um, no. Sometimes some people can be employed um, in contractual hours, that is, casual hours they, where they can support the teaching. So we've got people from clinical areas coming in to support us when we are doing our skills session because we are teaching nursing skills as well, maybe how to do blood pressure, how to detect a patient, having sepsis and all that. So you get maybe someone who has diploma but registered band five will come and support us. So you can be on casual hours, shadowing us, and as you are there, you know that the criteria is to get a degree, a master's degree. So whilst you're working these casual hours, there is opportunity to get those done and you then get a full-time lecturer position as you are done. So there is a route for that as well. You said if I have a certificate in teaching or whatever is a plus. If I want to do that in the UK, how long is it? Like a certificate in teaching or... Yeah. Because it's at a certificate level, most times these universities offers it as a part-time option and even if you don't have it and you get a job because it's part of the requirement the school sponsors you sometimes to do that so you'll be teaching and still doing that program in addition just to give you hands-on um, education on the theories of teaching and all those bit so some of the universities that you are teaching at the same time, you'll be having a one-day lecture on these um, courses I'm talking about. So they kind of embed it into the role. But you can also offer it as a standalone where you can just apply to universities and usually called postgraduate certificate in academic practice or something. So, And how long uh, is it if I'm doing it alone? Like Some schools or some universities do it in one year. So first trimester and second trimester, you are done. But if you are in a teaching post full time and you are not in a rush, you may be doing it at a slower pace. So it can be spread across two years where one year is trimester A, trimester B, for one academic year because we run in academic years that's how it's done so you do it in two academic years yeah okay any other courses that can increase my chances of getting this any other courses um, in terms of the teaching and learning i mean some people would have done maybe previously a diploma in education if you are in ghana and you did that and you're able to justify or support it with a kind of a portfolio of the things you've done whether in Ghana you were able to do a teaching in a nursing school. If you're able to show this, I'm sure you'll be able to meet that requirement. I think the idea is that when you are teaching as well, you have to be registered with the advanced higher fellows and all that, and they require that. So you need to meet that requirement by submitting a portfolio of your teaching experience if you've done a diploma from wherever you are coming from. So there are other routes you can go around it without necessarily not just 
doing what is in the UK as well. You said advanced what? You already said with the advanced what? Um, they call them advanced HE. So the advanced higher education is kind of a body that look at or it's just like we being under the National Midwifery Council. So if you are teaching in the university, the higher education, you're also under that. So you okay. register to become a, a fellow of that body or so that you are kind of recognized in a way that you have the skills to teach people and impact them with the knowledge as well. Okay. Yeah. Are lecturers on the shortage occupation list? Well, <laughs> I've not really checked, but I think depending on the field of lecturing, especially the nursing field, because we require you to have NMC qualification if you are teaching in these um, um, universities, it can be that because we don't have enough nurses, then not all of them are also moving to academia. It's a job that you can get um, a sponsorship for just like coming in as well. I know people even in the allied health profession, like occupational therapy or other allied health who have been able to get a job based on they being registered with a professional body in their home country. So it can also follow that route where you get the skilled worker visa or the former tier two visa for. Do you know people that have been successful applying for lecture jobs from outside the UK? Like, yes. it's not even really. Yeah. Wow. So, what was the process like? Is it the same thing as you're saying? Yeah, you just see the advertised post you apply. So, it's always about how you think your skill set matches the job description. So, if they say they require teaching experience, maybe back home you are teaching undergraduate nurses or even diploma nurses. You've done your diploma in education. So, you take that bus. Um, the only thing, especially in nursing, that some of them may want you to be registered in the UK as well because you are coming to teach UK okay. nursing students. So do you know the NMC code here? Do you know their standards so that you are not operating in the standards of your country? country. Yeah, so that will be the bit of the hindrance. But if you can demonstrate to them that maybe within a time frame, you are on course to achieve that. I think it, you'll be successful, especially if you've done the um, CBT and all that and getting to do it. You may be employed whilst you work on that. And for other allied health professionals, I know some people who are just employed, maybe in occupational health or to come and teach other aspects without necessarily having the HCPC qualification in the country. So it depends on the university and if they need you urgently, there will be ways to um, go around it. Yeah. You see how when you're looking for a nursing job, you go on track.jobs. Is there like a particular website for people that are looking for um, lecturing roles? Yes. I mean, it's just like the track jobs, I would say, is more tailored to NHS jobs, but you can go into Indeed, LinkedIn, um, all the other common sites as well. I like to use LinkedIn as well because they post jobs there. So you can just search Google, maybe lecturer in nursing jobs. And also here, because of the four field of nursing, they want nursing, maybe child specific nursing jobs, learning disability, um, mental health and adult nursing. So um, depending, you can just put nursing in adult nursing or lecturer in nursing, sometimes they just make it general. So you can use Indeed, I know, um, if you're in Scotland, my job Scotland is also there. Um, LinkedIn, also once you search at the job post, you can get, or just use general Google, it will just come up with the different sites, yeah. So looking at the responsibilities, eh, which yeah. is tougher? Your role as a band seven nurse and then your role as a lecturer, which is tougher? Well, I think because I have just started the lecturing role, maybe trying to learn on a new job, trying to know how systems work, how to use specific softwares and all that. I would think in the first year, it will be a challenge. Yeah, but as, as you get comfortable and you know where to find information, it becomes easier. The only challenge I would say is that although is on your job description that you are working 35 hours per week, you are likely to work longer hours because sometimes you have a class on Monday, 
you need to prepare during the weekend before the Monday class. So you may have to read over the slides and some articles to know how. But whereas maybe in the clinical side, once you sign out, hey, you are done for the day. Somebody is taking over. If there is anything that you need to prepare for, of course, then it's up to your own in terms of doing all this mandatory training, which we also do as well. And just for your revalidation and keeping up to date with new things coming, especially when COVID came, we were all learning some of the um, basic nursing stuff that we have to put in place. So um, sometimes just the preparation can take up your time compared to clinical, which I feel like if this is the world you've been working for a year, you know what to do so that you don't really need to sit down to really prepare okay. before you come. But then I've changed my mind. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I've changed my mind because I, these days I don't have time at all. And I'm afraid that I wouldn't be at the top of what I'm doing, you know, and I would embarrass myself in class. So I'd have to adequately prepare. I think that as time goes on, the courses remain the same unless the NMC changes the program. So that that's what I'm saying, that the first year will be a bit challenging. But once you've done one academic year, you know the models you are teaching. Imagine if you've taught sepsis before or false assessment. The next year is easier because you've taught it before. You may not need that preparation again. So I would just say the first year can be a bit challenging in the new role. But with the supporting team you are working with, sometimes you just need a 15-minute brush before you go to the class because you know your stuff. So if there are any additions that you want to just touch up so it will get easier <laughs> with time you are doing well and i'm super proud of you <laughs> i'm also proud of you <laughs> and i want to um, ask you this do you struggle like you know with our accent where we are from okay yeah. do you struggle to you know communicate with them you speak english fine but them the students, if especially if they are like from here if they are local do they hear you well do they complain are you comfortable but what are the challenges here? I think in terms of the language, maybe if you are coming in fresh from, let's say, Ghana, coming to lecture first time, not being in the UK previously, you may have that struggle. But imagine me, like I've schooled in Scotland. I'm used to the Glasgow region accent. I've also worked in England. So a bit of familiarity because of my patient during my consultation. But then sometimes if a student asks question, you may want them to repeat, especially if their distance is far and you can't really hear, you want to repeat to get the words clear because some of them have got the thick accent depending on where they are from, in Glasgow or wherever. Once you ask them, they understand and uh, you get feedback from them. I think I am okay. It may be a challenge when you just come in directly like that, but for someone, that you have been working with patients on the wards already is the same language anyway. So, yeah. yeah. So I don't rush. I make sure that I just take my time and in between I ask them if they understand and all that. Yeah, so I think it's not harder than dealing with patients. Even remember patients, they are not well. So if they are able to get you, how much more somebody who is fully alert and concentrating. So, yeah. Okay. Wow. So your final words for people that want to, you know, go on this journey. <laughs> <laughs> I think the journey depends on you and your passion and the experience that you want to have. For myself, I don't know whether I'm going to remain in academia forever or I'll go back to full-time clinical and do some part-time. It's a journey that I'm still exploring. So it all goes down to your purpose and your passion. Of course, nowadays, where the salary is high also you match that because of the cost of living so if there is a passion and you are also comfortable with the salary there i think you should go for it and if you want to get in there look at the job description just google the job and think about how you meet those criteria step by step so whilst waiting to apply what are some of the things you can do to meet that boss because it's not going to change much that job description, it may be the same for most investors in terms of the essential things that they want. So if you need to start a master's, you can start, but maybe you don't need to finish before you apply because some of them say 
nearing completion of masters is also allowed. So whilst in your clinical area, if there are opportunities to mentor students as a practice supervisor or assessor, engage in that so that you can use those experiences when you are writing your personal statement that even in the words, I mentor students, I supervise them and all that, because these are the things you are going to do anyway. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much. The good thing also is there can be opportunities for flexible working as well. Um, so that um, sometimes you've got just one class maybe in the morning. Once you're done with your teaching and you don't have a lot of emails to respond to or student appointments or anything, it's flexible that you can also work from home and do other stuff alongside. So even though... You can do agency and pick nursing shifts too. Yes, yes. I think um, I try to do agency, but not on a regular basis. I'm doing it just because I want to keep my skills. Though I'm teaching skills, I want to also be on the field to see what is done so that I can use that example. So I do that and also for the money too. Mm -hmm. So occasionally I do it, but not regularly. Yeah. And are you paid per hour? It's not. When I look at my pay slip, uh -huh. And compare it to the NHS where, you know, sometimes they write the per hourly rate. I don't see that with this job. Maybe oh, other universities. It's difficult to, to yeah. pay that per hour. Yes, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, they don't do it. like yeah. So it's not like, oh, somebody is not around. Can you cover the class? And you go and cover and they will pay you for that class. No. Mm -hmm. Whatever work you are doing, that's what you are getting in demand. So if you do extra job, it's still... The not same. going to be paid yeah when well, i've changed my mind <laughs> please don't change your mind <laughs> i think oh, you can do, you can be a very suitable candidate for teaching in the sense that you're already recording these videos but i will sit down and take a lot of minutes recording my slides and especially if it's just for the students to watch you are already doing that, so it's easier. You sit there, you rattle it, you post it, and they'll read. So the YouTube lecture. it makes it work easier. <laughs> the love I had for it is de decreasing. No, it's because of how you, your budget and your money Yes, is. yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but I'm super proud of you, and I'm so glad you're Ghanaian, and I'm so glad I know you personally. I have your number. I yes, I'm you. also happy. <laughs> now, I just forward the links because still people need jobs in the UK. So most people who come into contact, I just have to forward all these channels that are doing good jobs. And Anel is always on the list because when you want the updates, there are a lot of nursing. So those that have personal engagement with Nanel and Dina, of course, my brother Precious is also doing interviews. Yeah. And that. So you have been really helpful as well. You, you make the job easier rather than scheduling things. <laughs> so much, Irene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Guys, I will leave Irene's Facebook. Oh, but guys, those were bad hair with questions. You know she's a busy person. She's a wife with a lecture too. So um, I'll leave her details here. If you have anything that we did not stay yeah. to do. Anything that we did not state here, then you can contact her. You know when Precious came? Precious has suffered. <laughs> <laughs> that's happened. Two days. The video is about seven months old. Two days. People contact him. I know. And some of the things we discussed in the video. So, like, he's tired. I'm like, I'm sorry I put you into this. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. I mean, I know this Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We did not yes. discuss it here. Yeah. And then there's some things that you just have to Google and then you get it, okay? But if there's anything else that you seriously think you need help with, Irene is always there to help. I'll leave yeah. the details as well. Thank you so much, Irene. Thanks, Nanel. <laughs> Bye.